options, yeah, is um, how to say it.
Hey, Alex, how are you? Hey, how are you, mister? Good. Really good. Yeah? Yes. How's business? Yes, good. Really good. I have some trouble with the, the truck, the, it's about the cart, the, the transport. Uh-huh. But my, my brother, and my brother, he's a mechanic. And he solved the problem. But right now, it's okay. Ah, uh, okay. So the problem was that the cars were not working. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. But right now, yes, because in the morning, really yesterday, I have a a, a, a problem with one car. But when right now, we pick up the car uh, damage, the other pick up, pick up mm -hmm. I have a problem too. Ah. But my brother, but, but my brother saw me right, uh, immediately. Just change a, a like a a tube. Uh, um, let me see, like a uh, like a, I know the name, the name, uh, like a hole. Hose. Hose. Correct. Hose. Okay. Hose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But right now it's okay. If, if tomorrow we have a. a uh, like a like a five five uh, how do you say entregas? Uh, five deliveries. Five deliveries in di in different uh, time in different places. Mm, so you have yeah. to work very hard, very hard, a lot, very fast. Yes, yes, yes. And it's but, a lot of food. Um, let me see. In one uh place is like a one one hundred twenty five uh, uh breaks and uh breakfast. the other breakfast yes okay and the other uh place is like a forty and, and the other is like a thirty some some kind of but it's a different time with the breakfast it's a uh in the um, the break, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the break, and uh, for lunch and for dinner. So you have a lot. Of, it is breakfast, break, lunch, and dinner. Yes, for for but, deliver for for orders. For yes, yes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's good. I like it because oh, in the pandemic, oh, we have a, a, a really a big problem because we don't have a. a I work that the custom is a stop, the company is a stop because hey, what happened with the um, let me see the reunions or the meeting, uh, like the meeting, the meeting, yes, mm -hmm. the meeting, yes, yes, and I and I hope that in um, uh, let me see in in, in Christmas, mm -hmm. in, I I I I think and I hope. This uh, year in Christmas, a lot of companies um, celebrate. Yes, celebrate at the end because the the last the last year just uh, like a uh, two or three companies uh, celebrate. But the three years ago, for example, we have uh, like uh, ten or twelve companies. It's a big difference. Mm -hmm. Yes, I imagine because it, especially for Christmas, it's not a typical meal. It's more money, uh, m a little bit special, it, more important things. Yes, a, 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 a lot of people because some uh, reunions like uh, 2,000 people. 2,000? Yes, 2,000 people, 2,004 people, uh, 2,400 people, uh, 700 people, 800 people. Uh, 200 people, uh, and sometimes uh, 100 people, 60 people, but it's good. It's really no, good. That's a lot of cooking. Imagine yes. Guadalupe. Imagine, Miguel. 2,000 yes. people to cook only breakfast. <gasps> yeah, yeah, no, it's a lot of, it's a lot of, yes. No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not for me. It's too much cooking. I... <laughs> yeah. No, but yeah. that's good. That's good. All right. Well, guys, yes. welcome so much. Hey, I'm glad to hear that, Alex. I'm glad to hear that the business is good. This is the idea, right? Because sometimes yeah. it's not good. 
Sometimes, yes. Yes. You are yes. correct. Last year, uh, the companies did not celebrate Christmas. I don't know if the rest of you, your, your company celebrated Christmas or no last year, but many companies, nope, because of the yes. pandemic. Yes. Okay. Guys, what do you think? What is your opinion? Is good idea to celebrate this year or is not good because continue the pandemic? So what do you think? Is good or not good idea to celebrate Christmas this year? In the For job, in the good office? Idea, teacher. For me, it's a good idea because I uh, share a time with employees and, and the boss, administration, personal, everybody uh, share the a time uh, like a family, it's a second family that you pass a lot of time with them. And it's a, a way to give a gratification or extra, extra, extra benefits to an employee and that they feel important in the company. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's nice, right? Because not always you always you are working, not always you have the opportunity to share with your with your co-workers or with your boss. Sometimes only professional, professional, and you forget to to be like a person. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so anybody else? No, All right. I think no because all people just silence. Yeah, I see everybody is so quiet today. Nobody mm. wants to to talk and to speak. Everybody's like, I know, I know. I know. Uh -huh. Me da have, pena. Uh -huh. ah. What pena you are, tofu <laughs> pena. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. No, for me it's a good decision that the businessman celebrate that. The, the Christmas party. For example, the last year I participated in two party. Yeah, it's, it's not in mine this year. Yeah, two. In mine in this year, year. Four parties. In mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, three or four. It, it, <laughs> yeah, for me, it's, a, it's a excellent. Excellent benefits of all employees. Ah, uh, I told you it's excellent. Full party. <laughs> <laughs> party. Um, all right. Well, guys, it's great that we get a moment to talk and to chat. Today, we're going to continue with our listening exercise. We are focused on attitude questions. Yesterday, we saw a little bit of information about attitude questions. Today, we're going to practice. Um, if you remember, I'm going to play you the video of attitude questions and what is the function okay here are attitude questions and the functions one more time hi welcome to the listening section especially the attitude questions attitude questions ask you to show understanding of the speaker's attitude or their feelings about something you can recognize attitude questions because they include phrases like what is the professor's attitude what does the student think about what can be inferred? Now, these are important because these say this is the idea that is not what the person said. When attitude is not what they said, is what do they mean? This is the important part. So when you are speaking, and the example that we had at the beginning of the class with Alex, and I was asking Alex about the business and the things, and he says, oh, eh, before the pandemic, we had 2,000 lunches, 1,800 people. What, what can be inferred? Why does the, and you're going to hear, why does the, the professor say we had 2,000 lunches? A, they, he is happy to cook. B, this is good for business. Or C, ah, this is the idea I inferred. What do you understand from the words? No, what does he say? For example, Alex doesn't say, oh, it's good for business. 
No, it can be inferred. You understand? This is the attitude questions that we're going to practice today. It's okay, the idea for attitude questions? Uh, Alex has a lot of money. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, yes, before the pandemic, yes. And then in the pandemic, too. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. But since but I got. Right now is good. Right now, right now, little by little, little. Alex, Alex yeah. is like a Bianca, little by little. Choo, yeah. Time yeah. to go. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Good. So that is the idea for attitude questions. Is what you understand? Sorry, what you understand? Recognizing the question type. To identify the speaker's attitude, listen for phrases like "what I think" or "it seems to me" in the lecture or conversation. The attitude question will then refer to how valid the speaker's argument is or how sure of the facts the speaker is. Remember, when you're answering attitude questions, listen for the tone of the speaker's voice. Here's a listening tip that will help you with attitude questions. As you practice your listening skills, you will start noticing each speaker's style and their tone of voice. Then ask yourself these questions. Is the speaker's voice calm or emotional? relaxed or nervous, certain or confused, enthusiastic or bored. What does the speaker's tone of voice tell you? Watching comedy television shows is a good way to practice recognizing a speaker's tone of voice. Now you may go on watching a sample question. Okay, and this is the one that we already saw about how to have it. Today we're gonna to be practicing a little bit of these attitude questions, making sure that we understand not only the words, but the tone of the speaker. Here, we're not going to make groups. We're going to listen together and we want to answer. How is each person? We're going to answer together. You ready? Okay. Okay. One. Aren't you a little old to be reading comic books? Hey, this isn't just any comic book. It's a Walt Disney classic. Classic or not, this is a university. I'll have you know that this is required reading for my American popular culture course. What? I, I can't believe it. Here I am reading stacks of major works by important authors, um, Dickens and Tolstoy, for my survey of 19th century literature course. And you're reading comic books? Well, this isn't the only required reading material in the course. We have to read a lot about the events that influence the comic book writers and study contemporary art movements and how women and minorities are depicted in uh, comics and other pop art. This course isn't as easy as you think. So, according to what you understand, how is the woman? Is she critical or is she offended? Critical. Critical, teacher. Critical. Okay. Yeah. All right. Two. Well, Jane, how was your first day of classes? Great. I signed up for an American history course. It's about the Revolutionary War period with Professor Lewis. He's fantastic. Uh, history. Sounds boring to me. I never did like history. How can you find history boring when... Oh, I guess you never had a teacher like Dr. Lewis. He describes the events so vividly that it seems as though you're actually there, like caught up in the issues. You would really get into it. Well, maybe. Oh, come on. Why don't you take it? It's not too late to add a course. Well, I don't need it for my major, and there are other courses I'd rather take as electives. So what do you think? The man is forgiving or the man is defensive? Defensive. Defensive. Yeah, defensive. Okay. Okay. Number three. Three. Dr. Reed, are you busy? Hi, Donna. So you've come back to visit your old university, have you? Yeah. Our midterm break starts a few days earlier than here, so I'm home to see my folks. And how are they? Oh, just fine. Good, good. And uh, how do you like your program? Oh, it's great. It's a lot of work, though. <laughs> well, now that you're at the doctorate level, you can expect that. Yes, of course. And Dr. Jennings is... 
Do you know Dr. Jennings? Of him, yes, not personally. Uh-huh. Well, he's arranging for a field study group to work in Easter Island over the semester break. I've signed up to go. Fantastic. That'll be a great experience. I'd like to hear more about it, but I have a class in a few minutes. It's good to see you, Donna. Maybe you could pop into my office tomorrow afternoon, say, about 2.30? Sure. What do you think? What's number three? Excited. Excited. Okay, all right. Four. Good morning. Can I help you? Yeah. Who do I see about a complaint? Well, um, that would be me. What seems to be the problem? <sighs> well, we've just moved into student family housing, and the apartment is awful, just awful. Hmm, that's odd. All our units are inspected and decorated before new people move in. I'm sorry, but not in this case. The walls are dirty, and the refrigerator doesn't work, and... I see. Um, well, that's highly unusual. Could you please tell me the number of your unit? Um, it's 42 in South Court. 42? Are you sure? Let me look. And your name? Anderson. Daniel Anderson. Ah, I see. Here's the problem. You've been issued the wrong unit. Number 42 hasn't been redecorated yet. I'm really sorry about this. Let's see. You should have been given number 43. It's directly across from number 42. So how is the man? Uninterested. I don't know if the pronunciation is correct. Okay. Uninterested? Uninterested. Okay. I see only one person participating. What happened? What happened, guys? Mm -hmm. mm? I, I don't sure it's on, on, on interested. Okay. That's okay. Okay, all right. Hey. Hey, what happened? Yeah, I don't know. It didn't <laughs> finish. Hmm. Let me try again. Okay. I don't think it was complete, but... One. A few days earlier than here, so I'm home to see my folks. And how are they? Oh, just fine. Good, good. And uh, how do you like your program? and the apartment is awful, just awful. Hmm, that's odd. All our units are inspected and decorated before new people move in. I'm sorry, but not in this case. The walls are dirty, and the refrigerator doesn't work, and... I see. Um, well, that's highly unusual. Could you please tell me the number of your unit? Um, it's 42 in South Court. 42, are you sure? Let me look. And your name? Anderson. Daniel Anderson. Ah, I see. Here's the problem. You've been issued the wrong unit. Number 42 hasn't been redecorated yet. I'm really sorry about this. Let's see. You should have been given number 43. I think it's right. There's only... It's only... Mm -hmm. It's directly oh. across from number 42. Enthusiastic. Mm. She enthusiastic. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Wow. We don't have more exercises to practice it should have been more mm -hmm. it have been. Yeah. okay all right well let's take a look at the ones that we have um that way we have here number one is correct the critical mm -hmm. number two was defensive yes Three, the woman was excited yes four the man was uninterested now the others it's important that you take note because remember even if we didn't have the audio you still need to complete them in the platform to make sure that you get the credit or to mm -hmm. make sure that it's registered. So number five is enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. Number six is welcoming. Number seven is upset. Up. And number eight is helpful. Okay. Unfortunately, but I think we understand with the exercise, we understand the function. The function of the attitude is that you don't hear the person say, oh, I am angry, but for their words and how they say the things, you understand what they mean, right? Okay. Okay. Now we're going to be taking a look at organization questions. Organization questions, we're going to watch a small video and then learn how to answer those types of questions. 
Hi, welcome back. This time we'll go over organization questions. Organization questions ask you to show understanding of how a lecture is structured. You can recognize organization questions because they often include phrases such as, why does the professor mention? Or, why does the professor discuss? These kinds of phrases show that organization questions are often asked about the examples in a lecture. So it helps to listen for examples and think about why the professor is using them. Now let's look at a sample question. Okay, let's take a moment and read that one. Here's a listening tip. Okay, here, organization question. Who would like to hear? Who would like to read, sorry, you hear? Me. <laughs> okay, go ahead, go ahead. Amen. Go ahead. Go ahead, Rosanna. Okay. Uh, you hear not me. Now it's a fantastic, fantastic <laughs> insu insulator as the units. However, the extraordinary efficient of snow as an insulator makes it difficult to find a person body in a avalanche. Okay, good. The narrator. Why does the speaker mention the Inuits? Inuits. Uh -huh. Why? Why does uh -huh. why does the speaker mention this Inu Inuits? Mm -hmm. Continue reading. Go ahead. Okay, because the Inuit people will be authorities on snow. The Inuit people live in a snow climate. Therefore, they will know a lot about the properties of snow. Okay, so that's the idea. So here is more about culture. Now, how do we get the idea? You don't have to know the Inuit. Maybe ask the Pipil, ask the Maya. The, maybe you don't know about the different Indians or the different tribes, but we can understand snow is a fantastic insulator. If we use this expression as the Inuits is because you assume that it, they are, or these people are experts in this information. That's the idea of being able to answer this, is looking for the clues or the ideas that tell you in there, okay? So here we're gonna have organization questions we're gonna to practice together. One more time, organization questions. Here we have many different ones, okay? As we can see, we have five. We're gonna try these together, not in groups today, but today we're gonna to try together. So number one, listen and answer the question. Remember the same tip, always try to read the questions before you hear all of it. It used to be that the safety of a house was judged simply by whether it stood up or not. Well, things have changed. Uh, during the 20th century, people began to build houses with synthetic materials. And unfortunately, these materials have proved over time that they endanger the health of the owners or uh, the house's occupants, since the owner doesn't necessarily live in the place. So. Um, what are these synthetic materials? Well, asbestos, for example. Asbestos, which was used as roofing sheets and paneling. This was found to cause memory loss. No, I'm sorry. It causes lung cancer. Asbestos has been found to cause lung cancer and formaldehyde causes memory loss. Formaldehyde was used in um, insulating foams, synthetic resins and uh, glues in things like plywood, chipboard, hardboard. Formaldehyde used in this way causes damage to the nervous system and, as I said before, memory loss, severe memory loss. Um, then there are wood preservatives. Now, they contain, wood preservatives contain potent fungicides and insecticides. These cause cirrhosis of the liver, bone marrow atrophy, and nervous disorders. I'm really painting a bleak picture, aren't I? And, uh, and that brings us to paints. At one time, lead 
was the major ingredient in paint. You may think that when lead levels were restricted due to lead poisoning, that was the end of the problem. Now, get this. Paint technologists came up with even more poisonous metals, such as cadmium, to add to paints. <laughs> okay. Uh, the dangers of synthetic material are most apparent when a fire breaks out. Experts say that today, more people are killed by toxic fumes in house fires than by the fire itself. We may have used a lot of synthetic materials in house building, but in fact, for every synthetic material used in a home, there's a biological or natural counterpart. Okay, well, we can't all go, <laughs> we can't very well go and tear down our houses and start from scratch. However, there are ways to recognize and safely remove some synthetic material and replace it with natural alternatives. One. Woo! Very long, right? So we have to make yeah. sure that we pay attention clearly. Yeah. Why does the speaker mention fires? Is, is letter B or D? I think letter B. Yeah, I agree with letter B. Mm -hmm. B. So, okay. So the majority mm -hmm. say letter B, correct? Yeah. Okay. Letter B. Letter B. <laughs> okay. All right. No problem. Remember, the idea is to practice and we get. So now mm -hmm. listen to the guest inventor. It's been said that necessity is the mother of invention. And this may be true in some cases, but most things that people need already exist. We inventors tend to be a group of dissatisfied people. We see the drawbacks of products that are already in existence. I think most people do. Think of something that annoys you, your partner leaving the cap off the toothpaste, for instance. Now, the difference between most people and an inventor is that while most people grumble, an inventor starts to visualize solutions. We really get swept away with this enthusiasm, this passion for remedying the problem. We aren't grumpy, unhappy people. But let me say this. We may be dissatisfied, but we also tend to be very optimistic problem solvers. One has to be optimistic, extremely optimistic, to persist through the inevitable failures. Why? Because we fail a lot. But inventors thrive on failures. Where most people get discouraged and give up, inventors use failures as stepping stones to new approaches and then to eventual success. I shouldn't say success, because once the invention is completed, we often see another fault. Sometimes, in fact, an invention brings about a change that requires another invention. A case in point is the aspirin bottle. Small children manage to get into aspirin bottles with, um, unfortunately, sometimes fatal results. So the childproof bottle cap was invented. However, arthritis sufferers couldn't open the childproof bottle to get their medicine. In response to this problem, the two-way cap was invented. So now, users can choose the most convenient way to close the bottle. Problem solved? No, because a small child and an arthritis sufferer could share the same household. What are we going to do about it? Let's toss some ideas around to get your inventor brains operating. Oof. Why do they talk about the aspirin? Why aspirin? Why Tylenol? Panadol, why? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Guadalupe, I didn't hear you participate. Ivania, what happened? Letter A. Yeah, hey, I agree with Luis. Guadalupe, very masculine voice. I like it. I like it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> uh huh, Ivania. What happened? I don't listen, Ivania. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wake up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have some coffee, Ivania. Have some coffee. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or Coca Cola. Okay, Miguel. What about you? What do you think, Miguel? For you, which one? Letter B. Let's try the failures. Okay. So Miguel is letter B. All right. Okay. Me Mar too. Ah, you too. Yeah, B. Okay. Good. Good. That's the idea. It's okay to make the mistake. The problem is not the mistake. The important is to understand why. So we have letter A or letter B. These are the two options. Okay. We're gonna go to the next one. Let's see. What do we talk about here? What are we listening for? Orange, orange, orange peel. Mm -hmm. One way orange cultural peel. anthropologists can study a culture is by sifting through garbage dumps. Garbage is the remains of what a society used or threw away. Let's take, for example, an orange peel. What can I tell by looking at an orange peel? Well, um, I think you could possibly tell whether that orange was eaten or made into juice. Okay, good. Hmm. Let's imagine that we have a pile of orange peels, okay? This pile of orange peels indicates they were squeezed to make juice. What information can I gain from that? You could find out... Uh... Count those peels and estimate the number of oranges used. Uh, enough for two glasses may indicate a single person or, or a couple. And enough for a couple of quarts might indicate a family. Good. So we can make estimates on numbers of people. We can make even more assumptions. For example, what could we infer if there's enough for 50 people? Um, what would a seasonal change in the number of peels indicate? As you can see, an analysis of what's discarded can help us map out patterns and give us insights into human behavior. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on one's point of view, much of what's thrown away is organic. So when we're sifting through, say, the garbage dump of a Paleolithic village, the remains are limited. Of course, there are places where artifacts are better preserved, areas with dry desert air, such as Egypt, for instance or with freezing temperatures, such as the Arctic regions. Oh, we've run out of time. Okay, I want you to think about, when you pass a pile of garbage, look at it and think about what that garbage can tell you. Tomorrow we'll discuss cultural anthropologists and the issue of grave robbing. Hmm, a lot of information and only about oranges. So what did we learn? What does the professor mention oranges, orange peels? Mm. Letter A. Okay, letter A. Anybody else? Letter A. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. Letter A, teacher. Also, okay. Yes. okay. All right, good. And why does the professor regret that most garbage is organic? Organic. Mm -hmm. Why? This one, no. Letter A. Letter A also. Because our walls being filled with Letter C. Okay, letter C. Letter A, letter C. Anything else? Maybe letter C. Maybe you, you think the letter C is better, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now we listen to the last one. Here's our last audio. Okay. So today we're going to continue our discussion of various mental disorders. Specifically, I'm going to focus on various anxiety disorders. Now, of course, everyone feels anxious or uneasy now and again. You may feel anxious on your first day of a new job, or when you have to meet someone important, for example. Some people feel anxious when they visit the dentist. Some typical symptoms include a pounding heart, 
sweaty palms, or a dry mouth. But now, suppose that the anxiety is serious enough to keep you from enjoying life. Maybe it interferes with your work or controls much of your daily routine. Or maybe you experience occasional instances of anxiety that are terrifying enough that you become immobilized with fear. Maybe you will take extreme measures to get away from the object or situation causing the fear. Now, these anxieties can be put into three main groups according to what causes the reaction. The first are what we call specific phobias. These are the most common phobias, and their focus is specific objects. In fact, the thing feared is often relatively safe, and also the sufferer usually realizes that and knows that their fear is irrational. A very common specific phobia is fear of heights, for example. This fear is very common. No doubt some of you have felt this fear from time to time. Fear of spiders and insects is another common one. Spiders are not usually harmful. Well, not usually anyway. But some people break out into a cold sweat and have heart palpitations and become immobile even if they know a spider is on the other side of the room. Some of the less common phobias seem rather bizarre. For example, would you believe some people are afraid of color, say the color yellow? Another strange one is fear of laughter. I guess that's not a laughing matter for the sufferer. Okay, so what causes these specific phobias? Well, we don't know exactly. We do know that they tend to run in families, and they are apparently slightly more common in women. Many of them persist. That is, they don't go away on their own. At least that tends to be the case with phobias that develop in adolescence or adulthood. Specific phobias that develop in childhood are more likely to disappear with time. Another category of phobia is called social phobia. This fear is really the fear of being embarrassed or humiliated in front of other people. If social phobia is serious enough, it can prevent a person from continuing in school or work and maybe that person avoids making friends. Now, some social phobics can actually be at ease with other people most of the time, except in particular situations. So, for example, a sufferer here may believe that small mistakes they make are more significant than they really are, or feel that everyone is looking at them. They could also be extremely fearful of, for example, using the phone in front of other people, or it may be something really simple and seemingly irrational, such as drinking a cup of coffee, or even, say, buttoning a coat in front of others. A third category of phobia is known as agoraphobia. Do I need to put that on the board? No? Okay, fine. Okay, so this phobia causes people to suffer anxiety about being in places or situations from which they perceive it might be difficult to escape or in which it seems help is not available. So agoraphobia might include a fear of traveling alone, being alone in a crowd, or uh, being unable to leave a place easily. People with this condition often develop the disorder after suffering from a panic attack, that is, a feeling of intense terror with symptoms such as sweating and shortness of breath. Such panic attacks may occur randomly and without warning, so this makes it difficult for a sufferer to predict what kind of situation will provoke a panic attack. So then he or she will try to avoid situations and places where such attacks have happened previously. Okay, to wrap up today. Well, the good news is that all of these disorders can be treated with some degree of success through various medications and therapies. Tomorrow, we'll look in more detail at the kind of treatments that might prove useful in dealing with some of them. Oof, a lot of information, a lot of information. Yes. Yeah. <sighs> Why does the professor mention that many people feel anxious when they visit the dentist? 
how does that relate to all of the conversation she says? Mm -hmm. Letter D. D. Letter B, I guess. Letter D. Ah, uh, so B, D. Or D? B or D? I D. think it's D. Okay. I think it's D. 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 Okay. D. 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 Don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. The idea to do, <laughs> we are taking our time. We we don't want to check the answers in this moment. In this moment is not normal on the exam, but today we are going to listen again and see, do you want to change your answer or is your answer correct? So okay. Listen, do you want okay. to change the answer or is the answer correct? Okay. It used to be that the safety of a house was judged simply by whether it stood up or not. Well, things have changed. Uh, during the 20th century, people began to build houses with synthetic materials. And unfortunately, these materials have proved over time that they endanger the health of the owners or uh, the house's occupants, since the owner doesn't necessarily live in the place. So. Um, what are these synthetic materials? Well, asbestos, for example. Asbestos, which was used as roofing sheets and paneling. This was found to cause memory loss. No, I'm sorry. It causes lung cancer. Asbestos has been found to cause lung cancer and formaldehyde causes memory loss. Formaldehyde was used in um, insulating foams, synthetic resins and uh, glues in things like plywood, chipboard, hardboard. Formaldehyde used in this way causes damage to the nervous system and, as I said before, memory loss, severe memory loss. Um, then there are wood preservatives. Now, they contain, wood preservatives contain potent fungicides and insecticides. These cause cirrhosis of the liver, bone marrow atrophy, and nervous disorders. I'm really painting a bleak picture, aren't I? And, uh, and that brings us to paints. At one time, lead was the major ingredient in paint. You may think that when lead levels were restricted due to lead poisoning, that was the end of the problem. Now, get this. Paint technologists came up with even more poisonous metals, such as cadmium, to add to paints. <laughs> okay. Uh, the dangers of synthetic material are most apparent when a fire breaks out. Experts say that today, more people are killed by toxic fumes in house fires than by the fire itself. We may have used a lot of synthetic materials in house building, but in fact, for every synthetic material used in a home, there's a biological or natural counterpart. Okay, well, we can't all go, <laughs> we can't very well go and tear down our houses and start from scratch. However, there are ways to recognize and safely remove some synthetic material and replace it with natural alternatives. One. What is number one? Do you agree or do you want to change the answer? It's a great teacher. It's letter C. I me. agree with letter B. <laughs> for me, it's letter D. Ooh. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> the candle is at its pain. No Consider problem. Consider letter B because mention many ways in which synthetic material are dangerous. I don't know. Okay, okay. Uh, for me, let us see because she says that uh, many people die by fumes, not by the fire only. Okay, okay, good. Guys, write down your answers. We're going to check at the end. The idea is not to have the correct answer, but to understand why it's correct or why mm -hmm. it's wrong. It's okay if you make a mistake. The idea is to identify why. Why was my answer incorrect? So. Don't worry, but in the piece of paper or in the notebook or someplace, write down your answer. Okay, okay. right now, right now we say, most people say letter B, 
we continue with letter B. And we're going to try in one moment. Now, number two, listen and see if you want to change your answer or the answer is correct. Number two. It's been said that necessity is the mother of invention. And this may be true in some cases, but most things that people need already exist. We inventors tend to be a group of dissatisfied people. We see the drawbacks of products that are already in existence. I think most people do. Think of something that annoys you, your partner leaving the cap off the toothpaste, for instance. Now, the difference between most people and an inventor is that while most people grumble, an inventor starts to visualize solutions. We really get swept away with this enthusiasm, this passion for remedying the problem. We aren't grumpy, unhappy people. Let me say this. We may be dissatisfied, but we also tend to be very optimistic problem solvers. One has to be optimistic, extremely optimistic, to persist through the inevitable failures. Why? Because we fail a lot. But inventors thrive on failures. Where most people get discouraged and give up, inventors use failures as stepping stones to new approaches and then to eventual success. I shouldn't say success, because once the invention is completed, we often see another fault. Sometimes, in fact, an invention brings about a change that requires another invention. A case in point is the aspirin bottle. Small children manage to get into aspirin bottles with, um, unfortunately, sometimes fatal results. So the childproof bottle cap was invented. However, arthritis sufferers couldn't open the childproof bottle to get their medicine. In response to this problem, the two-way cap was invented. So now, users can choose the most convenient way to close the bottle. Problem solved? No, because a small child and an arthritis sufferer could share the same household. What are we going to do about it? Let's toss some ideas around to get your inventor brains operating. What do you think is correct or we need to change the answer? Oh, letter A. So we change for letter A. Anybody yes, else? Yes, letter A. I agree with Luis. Okay. Letter A teacher. Okay, good, all right. Remember, number three, we have two questions. So be careful, focus, because number three, you need to answer two questions. Okay. Is it correct or we need to change the two questions? One way cultural anthropologists can study a culture is by sifting through garbage dumps. Garbage is the remains of what a society used or threw away. Let's take, for example, an orange peel. What can I tell by looking at an orange peel? Well, um, I think you could possibly tell whether that orange was eaten or made into juice. Okay, good. Hmm. Let's imagine that we have a pile of orange peels, okay? This pile of orange peels indicates they were squeezed to make juice. What information can I gain from that? You could find out, uh, count those peels and estimate the number of oranges used. Uh, enough for two glasses may indicate a single person or, or a couple. And enough for a couple of quarts might indicate a family. Good. So we can make estimates on numbers of people. We can make even more assumptions. For example, what could we infer if there's enough for 50 people? Um, what would a seasonal change in the number of peels indicate? As you can see, an analysis of what's discarded can help us map out patterns and give us insights into human behavior. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on one's point of view, much of what's thrown away is organic. So when we're sifting through, say, the garbage dump of a Paleolithic village, the remains are limited. Of course, there are places where artifacts are better preserved, areas with dry desert air, such as Egypt, for instance, 
or with freezing temperatures such as the Arctic regions. Oh, we've run out of time. Okay, I want you to think about when you pass a pile of garbage, look at it and think about what that garbage can tell you. Tomorrow we'll discuss cultural anthropologists and the issue of grave robbing. Okay. We have two questions, number three and number four. Number three, why does the professor mention orange peels? The same or change? The same. The same. The same. I think the same. Okay, good. Number four, why does the professor regret that most regret. garbage is organic? It's the same. The same. Yes, do you agree? Yes, yes teacher. All right, good. The last one, the last one. And then we finally see how we did with all of the results. Remember, do you agree or disagree? Remember, this one is very long. Please pay attention. If you need to, learn to take notes. Learn to write down information that for you is important. So today we're going to continue our discussion of various mental disorders. Specifically, I'm going to focus on various anxiety disorders. Now, of course, everyone feels anxious or uneasy now and again. You may feel anxious on your first day of a new job or when you have to meet someone important, for example. Some people feel anxious when they visit the dentist. Some typical symptoms include a pounding heart, sweaty palms, or a dry mouth. But now, Suppose that the anxiety is serious enough to keep you from enjoying life. Maybe it interferes with your work or controls much of your daily routine. Or maybe you experience occasional instances of anxiety that are terrifying enough that you become immobilized with fear. Maybe you will take extreme measures to get away from the object or situation causing the fear. Now, these anxieties can be put into three main groups according to what causes the reaction. The first are what we call specific phobias. These are the most common phobias, and their focus is specific objects. In fact, the thing feared is often relatively safe, and also the sufferer usually realizes that and knows that their fear is irrational. A very common specific phobia is fear of heights, for example. This fear is very common. No doubt some of you have felt this fear from time to time. Fear of spiders and insects is another common one. Spiders are not usually harmful. Well, not usually anyway. But some people break out into a cold sweat and have heart palpitations and become immobile even if they know a spider is on the other side of the room. Some of the less common phobias seem rather bizarre. For example, would you believe some people are afraid of color, say the color yellow? Another strange one is fear of laughter. I guess that's not a laughing matter for the sufferer. Okay, so what causes these specific phobias? Well, we don't know exactly. We do know that they tend to run in families and they are apparently slightly more common in women. Many of them persist. That is, they don't go away on their own. At least that tends to be the case with phobias that develop in adolescence or adulthood. Specific phobias that develop in childhood are more likely to disappear with time. Another category of phobia is called social phobia. This fear is really the fear of being embarrassed or humiliated in front of other people. If social phobia is serious enough, it can prevent a person from continuing in school or work, and maybe that person avoids making friends. Now, some social phobics can actually be at ease with other people most of the time, except in particular situations. So, for example, a sufferer here may believe that small mistakes they make are more significant than they really are, or feel that everyone is looking at them. They could also be extremely fearful of, for example, using the phone in front of other people. Or it may be something really simple and seemingly irrational, such as drinking a cup of coffee, 
or even, say, buttoning a coat in front of others. A third category of phobia is known as agoraphobia. Do I need to put that on the board? No? Okay, fine. Okay, so this phobia causes people to suffer anxiety about being in places or situations from which they perceive it might be difficult to escape or in which it seems help is not available. So agoraphobia might include a fear of traveling alone, being alone in a crowd, or uh, being unable to leave a place easily. People with this condition often develop the disorder after suffering from a panic attack. That is, a feeling of intense terror with symptoms such as sweating and shortness of breath. Such panic attacks may occur randomly and without warning, so this makes it difficult for a sufferer to predict what kind of situation will provoke a panic attack. So then he or she will try to avoid situations and places where such attacks have happened previously. Okay, to wrap up today, well, the good news is that all of these disorders can be treated with some degree of success through various medications and therapies. Tomorrow, we'll look in more detail at the kind of treatments that might prove useful in dealing with some of them. Oof. What do you think? What do you think? The same. Yeah. Letter B, teacher, together. Continue with letter B. Letter D. 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 D for dog. Yeah. To give an example of common acid trigger for most people. Okay. All right. All right. It's time to see the results. Okay. Ah, you see. Very good. Very good. Letter D. Letter D. Letter C. Nice. Letter A. Good. Correct. We change the answer for number two. And also number one. Okay. Great job, guys. Mm -hmm. As you can see, the answers are the answers for those. Oof, a little difficult today. Mm -hmm. More, It's a little bit harder the listening, but that's why we did together. Because together we can analyze and we can see. The important is to develop the skill in one listening. That way, when you listen the first time, you can do the same thing. Not necessary two times, because in the exam, only one time. But okay. Teacher, yes, Roxanne. This part is is complicated because for me, all the all answer seem, seems parece yes uh, seems. correct. Yes, because uh, the speaker mentioned all all thing that mentioned in the in the answer and it's very difficult to find the the exactly for me yeah. it's difficult yeah i think marine <laughs> <laughs> hey Luis Molina. Uh -huh. not exactly but yes this type of listening requires more practice and more concentration than the other listenings because it's only many times it's only one word or two words that make the difference. For example, sometimes it's for, to, because, do, to, uh, in, and then only with this word change the a meaning and you have to be very careful in the listening. Don't worry, we're going to pause today for the listening and we're gonna to continue tomorrow to do more listening, okay? Yep. Excellent. Thank you, guys. Okay. Have a great night. Okay, thank, thank you. you thank you, teacher. Good night, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.